Now. Would you look at that? Behold, the interesting and exclusive Japanese ARS slab. It was heavily requested in the last slab testing video. If you have not watched that, I suggest you go see that first because the results from this will be added to the results from that to see where it stands. To be honest, looking at pictures of the ARS slab online before I actually acquired some, I wasn't impressed. I didn't really like the label being on the bottom. I did like it being metal, and I didn't think the slab looked all that great. But looking at it in person changed all of that. This thing looks good, and it feels good too. It's thick, it's got a nice weight to it, it feels like quality when you're holding it. How are they going to compare to all of the other slabs we've tested so far, and all the slabs that we're still going to test? That's what we're going to find out. But first thing I wanted to do was compare the dimensions and weight to some other common slabs. Before we get into that, I want to say thank you to all the channel members. Yes, you can become a channel member now. I'll wait while you read the long list of members. Okay, that should be enough time. But really, thank you a lot. It really means a lot to me. It takes a lot of time and effort and money to put all this stuff together for you guys. So if you like it, maybe consider being a member. The perks? Well, first you get this cool little character next to your name. You start out as a little Charmander. You can work your way all the way up to the legendary Bidoof. Next, you get access to these very nice emojis. There's three different levels to choose from. Choose whichever you'd like based on the perks you like, based on how much you want to support this channel. Now let's get back into it. First, I took a thickness measurement of the ARS slab. Came out to 10.03 millimeters. Comparing that to tag at 7.44, CGC comes in at 7.49, and a PSA comes in at 6.32 millimeters. Then I measured the mass of each of them, PSA 44.02 grams, then we've got CGC 56.95 grams, tag comes in at 64.59 grams, and the giant brick of a slab ARS comes in at 108.72 grams. Now that we know that critical information, let's get right into it. This is durometer testing. You know it, you love it. This uses a small little pin on the bottom of this gauge, pokes into the plastic, and based on how much it pokes in versus how much it's pushed back up into the device, uh, it gives you a durometer. There's not any units for this. It's a comparative measurement. So we're looking at about 83.2 for this, which is not bad at all. So here's how it stacks up against all the other slabs we tested. It comes in at fourth place, right behind CGC, right ahead of CC and G, which is Crown Collectibles and Grading. Putting it on the final scoreboard, it's going to be in fourth place because for this, I took the slab, I divided everything into 15 points for the first one, now it's 16 points, and you get 16 points for being first, 15 for second, 14 for third, and so on. Now we're going to move into the next test, which is going to be UV testing. I'm sure you all remember this machine from the first slab testing video. It's a beast of a UV oven, and today we're going to put this slab through it. Some call it the Sun Simulator 9000. And yes, that sum was just me that one time, and now a second time. You can practically feel the cancer forming on your skin. It's great. First we're going to have a little before photo of the slab, and then in it goes. Have fun, my little beefcake. And a little while longer, it comes out with a beautiful cancerous glow. So let's look at the before and the after. The before is on the left, the after is on the right. And at first glance, it might look like there's no difference. I don't think there's any difference in the card or the label. The metal label, I didn't expect to be any different. If you look from the side, you can tell there is yellowing on the back edge that was exposed to most of the UV. So let's go into the final points. After calculating the points for the ARS slab, and if you don't remember, what I did was everybody started with 10 points. I took five off if the label was damaged, and then I took five off if the inner sleeve was damaged because none of the slabs we tested before had any discoloration after going through that same oven with the same settings. That's very interesting to me. So I didn't have to account for that in the last video. So I boosted everybody else up five points from what they were at. And now you lose five if you're yellowing, you lose five if your inner sleeve is damaged, and you lose five if the label is damaged. After all of that, ARS drops down into fifth place. It is right behind CGC and right ahead of the old PSA slab. Unfortunate, but not too bad. Let's go on to the next test, everybody's favorite. This is the humidity test. Here we are in the yellow anti-UV room. We're gonna open up the chamber. Different chamber for this one. It's just a 
newer model it's easier to program close it up go down to our trusty tcg random program start that up and inside this chamber soon it will be a sauna and after about an hour we'll come back and check it It's been about an hour. Now we're gonna check it. As you can see, this thing looks great. Oh wait. As you can see, this card is completely blasted. This thing looks like it learned the alphabet, but only from H2O. Is the slab fully sealed? H2O, no it isn't. Unfortunately, I don't think Crocolore is going to survive that splash attack. But where is the water getting in? It's tough to tell before we take it apart, but I would guess that it does not have a complete weld around the edges. We love you, Croc, but you are a disappointment. Scoring. If you remember, the scoring for this section is 10 points. Five points are deducted if water got into the slab, and five points are deducted if water damages the card inside. There were instances before where water got into the slab edges, but not into the card chamber. We're looking at zero points for ARS in this round, which drops it to 11th place behind CAG and right in front of AGS. Not to worry though, we have two tests remaining. Let's move into Crack Force. In this test, we will be using a 100 pound gauge to see what kind of force is needed to crack the slab in three separate places. First, we will check the label area. With me cranking it down as hard as I can without breaking the plastic mount, we have no cracking. Now onto a corner and we see the same thing happen. We don't usually do the middle, but I did want to see. Now onto the edge with a wedge tip instead of the pointy tip. Same story again. The tips just sink into the polymer like quicksand. Not even any micro cracking or weld cracking that I can tell. I was so impressed that I tried it a few more times. It was actually pretty fun. I tried it on the backside too, just to try to squeeze one little crack out of this thing. This is really interesting. No, this test does not simulate the impact of a drop, but it does give you a sense of how easily these would be damaged in the case of a drop, and how the material responds to force. These results tell me that this slab would likely dent in the event of a fall. It also tells me that it absorbs force very well, which would keep the force from transferring to the card, ultimately protecting the card more efficiently. Regarding points, this got three overloads, thus a perfect score. Adding that in brings it all the way back to 5th place, behind Beckett and in front of CGC. Time to crack it open and see how it scores on the final test. Clarity. Bending the slab in hand and pushing on it does not produce any out of place noises. It seems pretty solid. I did notice that if you grab the front plate on the bottom edge, there is a lot of movement. There is no way that this is sealed right here. This could be where moisture was getting in, or it could be a broken seal from its accidental slip off the table earlier. Either way, I couldn't open it without a tool, but the label was slipping around a lot. With a pair of scissors, it was no problem to pop that edge up enough to separate the two sides. On that same edge, you can see a wide weld area that was definitely not bonded to the other plate before. Inspecting the plates more reveals that it does seem like there is a complete weld. It is just extremely thin, almost not visible, except for that one odd spot we saw at the bottom. I almost thought at first that it might just be pressed together somehow. This weld is the thinnest I have seen yet, and certainly not substantial enough for a robust bond and seal. The label is real metal, with laser etching. Very nice. Now onto our actual test. Here I have our transmittance meter. It will shine a light from one tube to the other. Anything in the way will block some light from getting across, and we can see what percentage is getting across on the display. It looks like we are getting around 89.63%. A decent number, but actually on the lower side of what we have seen so far. This test is scored similarly to the durometer test, and after putting it into the graph, we have the final scoring. ARS manages to sneak into fourth place behind CC and G, but pushing Beckett into fifth place. I'm sure a lot of you are upset about this, as most people thought it would easily beat all the others. But look, 
you get a fancy certificate with your slabs when you grade with ARS. But from the little I know, this is a pretty exclusive grading company and you have to actually be in Japan to grade with them. It will surely be in the finals where we will do a larger assortment of tests, most more aligned with real world use. Until then, be sure to subscribe and stay on the lookout for ACE grading in the next lab testing video. While you're at it, go check out my video where I coat Pokemon cards in real gold using Argon Plasma.